All right. In that screen, it says Aspiring Principals Educational Leaders. Uh, everybody see that uh, on your screen? Great. A um, couple things I just want to share with you. One is uh, I'm reviewing uh, registration as we speak. I want to make sure that everyone knows that uh, the registration online portal has been open since March and uh, everyone should be registered for summer one and two. Uh, I'm going through all those registrations right now and connecting with folks who may not be registered. So if you have any questions about registration, please let me know. Uh, the uh, the other one there that a lot of people ask about is calendars and timelines. I've had probably 22 questions about, gosh, when does spring be end and when does summer start? And by the way, I'm going to be on a summer vacation. When does fall start? Um, if you click on calendars and timelines, you always have a four month, I mean, I'm sorry, a four term look ahead. And if you click on another one, you have a full year look ahead. So I want to make sure everybody knows that that content is there. Uh, the next one that's on the very bottom here is a new Canvas ePortfolio. And if you click on that one, you get the what, the how, and the why. And uh, this is the document that I mentioned before. Um, I hope you've had a chance to look through that. I think everything you'd ever want to know and more is on there. My goal was to try to put uh, a focused, uh, put focused content on there so you're not reading a lot, but to put enough that it provides uh, the, the what, the why, and the how. <clears throat> Two of the things, oh, let me just, uh, if you click on each one of these little pull downs, you'll get uh, what is the Canvas portfolio, what's included in there, uh, why do we use it, how do we develop it, and student expectations. And the, one of the things I think is much, uh, uh, very much important to you is that video in the center of the screen will uh, is a four minute video. It's really a little less than four minutes, but it shows you click number one, click here number two this is what you do it shows you very clearly what to do and the next couple here as you look at exemplar pages um, students uh, some of the students that uh, are in your class right now have as they've created their portfolios i want to put what they actually look like and so um, if you click on that link it'll show you what they wrote um, i redacted some of that so you're not uh, looking at all their personal information but you get the gist of uh, what you should write for example, I talked to a person last night that said, you know, I'm not really uh, sure what I should write for a professional aspiration statement. And simply, I just stated that uh, what what do you see yourself doing in the next one year, two year, five years, 10 years? And uh, by the way, there's a sample that you can kind of get some wording to kind of get the, the ball started. Uh, gosh, how much should I write about a professional biography? Should I put 300 words? Should I put a few statements? Um, this person did a wonderful job in one paragraph that started to paint a picture of who they were. And the last one is uh, the professional mission, vision, and values. Um, where do I start? Uh, there's there's lots of content there. And in fact, in most of our classes, we've already started talking about the uh, mission, vision, and values and, and some of those type of things. But you have some content that you can look at and get a jump start on. If you look at the next page, um, they have uh, um, uh, that's the front page of the ePortfolio. If you look at the top left-hand corner, you'll see the word home. And on that home page, it provides an introduction. Again, on that introduction, you'll put your name and your email address. Um, and uh, all of that is, is listed in the, the summary document that I'll show you in just a moment. It's also on the front page here. Um, and if you put your professional biography, professional uh, aspiration statement, and personal mission, vision, values, for right now at this moment, it's a draft. Um, you're going to continue to develop that, and as you get into your internship, you're going to fine-tune it more and more and more, and as you complete the program and you want to use that for, um, uh, for professional use, of course, you're going to fine-tune and clean it up a little bit more and let it grow and advance as you, your, uh, your journey continues and your vision becomes clearer. But as you approach the uh, internship, uh, that's when it will be officially uh, evaluated. Um, right, Every course, it is unofficially evaluated and you get a little bit of coaching along the way and just to make sure that you're moving in the right direction. In the EDU 699 internship class, there will be a formal evaluation of it. In some situations, uh, a student may have a class or two after that, but if you are not finished with your ePortfolio within EDU 699 internship, you will get an IP in that class until you have it finished. And so as you're moving forward, you don't need to think of all the content being perfect. Um, you are developing it, you're growing it, um, you're, uh, you're on a journey of both discovery and development, and as you move forward, you're going to fine tune that. So you have your front page and the next page, for example, this person was in EDU 676, which is the personnel class. 
And you'll put two things in there. The essential learning reflection statement. All that is is a statement or a paragraph that says, in this personnel class, I believe that I have the now have the knowledge, the skills to um, to effectively work with faculty and staff at a elementary level or whatever that content is. You'll have an application of learning statement. Um, in that statement, it'll say, this is how I will apply that as an assistant principal or as a principal, or if you uh, aspire to a different position. And the last thing you'll do is you'll put the documents that are stated in this page. Um, if you're in the visionary leadership class, it shows you which documents you'll need to attach. If you're in the school community, uh, if you're in the instructional design, it shows you those items that you will need to attach. So that's just one of those summaries. And I'm going to go back for a second here. Hold on just one second. If we look at this graphic overview of what should it look like when it is finished, and then we'll get to the clicks, and hopefully you can see that. When it's finished, this is just an example that I put together in the uh, ePortfolio. You'll look down the left side, you'll see the word home. You'll also see each one of the classes that you have taken within the program. Now, one of the things that uh, one of the, the other items I want to make sure that there's clearly understood some of you that are halfway through the program or finishing the program, um, you may say, geez, do I have to go back into live text and bring everything over? Uh, you have an option. Option number one is as of spring A 2024, everything that all the courses that you've been involved in need to be in the ePortfolio uh, because everything else was put into live text. What I want to, as plan B, what I want to recommend, it's a very simple process once you get into it. And it's very simple to bring those um, um, assignments over. And so I'm going to recommend that you, you develop a complete portfolio. Although when you step into EDU 699, when your portfolio is uh, developed, they will look at as of spring A 2024, is all the content current, updated, and of reasonable quality. Um, and so anything before that will be icing on the cake. Again, I want to, to, uh, to recommend strongly that you bring everything over, but it is not a requirement. As of spring A 2024, everything should be in those buckets. So if you look on the left side of this document, you'll see that all of those courses are listed. At the very bottom here, um, it says organize sections. And if you click on that, once we go into the system, I will click on that. It'll say enter the next section. And so if I was starting from the first course that I would that I came into, as you did in EDU 6, uh, um, EDU 614 Visionary Leadership, to create that, all you need to do is click on Organize Sections. It'll say name it and you put EDU 614, put the name of the course, and then you have that page. And you'll do that for all of your courses that you come down here. Or again, uh, as we talked about plan A and plan B, uh, at a minimum, you'll have all the courses from spring A through the end of your program listed on that item. And as you look at um, the last page, again, it shows in every class, what are the three to four or five uh, assignments? And again, it's nothing that you need to create. All you're doing is linking them just like you would um, linking a document in um, Canvas. And on each one of the pages, you'll have the essential learnings, applications of learning, and the outcomes are those assignments. And so your page will look something like that. So there are those, those, uh, those two documents that show exactly what it should look like. One is a completed with all the courses listed. One, another one is a fellow student who had created theirs already. And I, I asked them for permission to show theirs just because I wanted something that a student created. And the other thing that I think is very important after this session, uh, things will hopefully be clear. And if you forget, let's see now, where am I supposed to click? If you click on this, um, uh, video on right here it'll show you very clearly uh, this is where you click first this is where you click second this is how you add a course this is how you add documents and it's a short video it's probably around three minutes overall and so um, it's it's also a nice video because uh, if you uh, start the video and stop the video and go in and click if you have two screens or whatever whatever your technology situation is you can start and stop that video and it will give you a, a personal tutorial of how to exactly do it and now we're also going to do that in this in uh, this session tonight. So, so I'm going to stop sharing that one and I'm going to go to oops 
um, our Canvas courses. And you can either follow along with me or you can take notes along the way or know that just about everything that we talk about tonight is in that video I showed you in a moment. And I am also recording this, so if you do want to um, refer back to it, you're welcome to do that. So as you look at the, uh, uh, the course that you're in, the first thing that you're going to do, if you look to the left-hand corner, are you seeing my screen clearly? Give me a thumbs up if you're seeing my screen. Okay. Are you seeing my cursor move? All right. So if you look at uh, the account uh, up in the top left-hand corner, if you click on the account, it's going to have a window that pops open that has notifications, files, settings, and ePortfolio. Your next step, you'll click on ePortfolio. And as you get to ePortfolio, originally you won't have anything in here. As you click on the ePortfolio, um, it's going to give you some, some information here. And you're going to go over to the right side and click on Create an ePortfolio. As you can see, I've already created a few. Uh, the, the one that I showed you a moment ago, they have the, uh, the other one, a draft uh, that I just kind of played with. So you can go create an ePortfolio and it's going to ask you to name your portfolio. The easiest way to do that so we have some consistency is just do your last name and initials and portfolio. Uh, that way it, uh, we have some consistency. There isn't a requirement exactly how you do that, but you should include your name in there. Uh, again, easiest thing is last name and then possibly initials or just put in your full name. Also on here, it says make it public. You don't want to make it public. And if you click ePortfolio, it will create what you see in front of you. The next thing is um, in a during week five in the course that uh, we just had, there was a one assignment that said, give me a uh, formative uh, overview of where you are on the process. Many people started to create it and all they did is, if you look at the center of the screen, you'll see copy and share this link to give others access to your portfolio. So in the future, if I was the superintendent of the Miami schools and I was interviewing you for a top principal's job, all you would do is you'd copy that web link, you would send that to me, and and you could, uh, um, doing a, during the interview or a presentation, you could share documents. So when someone says, um, tell me, help me understand what you know about funding schools, you could pull up that content. Um, you could pull up uh, one of the assignments or whatever that scenario may be. So to create your, I'm going to go back to... ...portfolios. And what this is, is, you can see this bottom one is the one that we just created. I'll click on this top one. And you can see here's home. And you see I put my, a picture on there. Um, what you, uh, as you look at the instructions that are provided on that document, optional, you can put a professional photo. If you think there's something, say that there's something about your school or a picture of you in the classroom, you don't need to put a picture in there. Graphics do something to stimulate the mind. And so if there's a picture of you in an instructional setting, uh, there, if there's a picture that you believe um, uh, makes a positive impression to an employer, uh, you know, please do that. If you don't aren't feeling it, if you don't believe that that's appropriate, um, you don't need to add that picture. Um, but what is required is you're going to put your name and you're going to put your email address and then your professional bio, your professional aspiration statement, and your mission, vision, and value statement. That will be on the home page. And uh, all right, so now I'm going to go back out again so you can see it happen again. You're going to click on the account, click on ePortfolios, and the one that I created just a little while ago, my portfolio, or it will say um, your name on there. And you could create several. If you go in there and play around and one doesn't look quite right, um, you could delete it or you could just leave it. Um, you can do anything. It, this it's, it's nothing that you, you can't mess anything up. And so if you create one um, and you don't like the way that's going, you can edit it or you can just delete it or just leave it there. And so as you look at getting started, the first thing you're going to do is click on the Getting Started Wizard. And once you start on the click on the getting started wizard, it will give you instructions at the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to go back to this home. I started to create one for the EDU 676 class and I put in the essential learnings, application of learning and these three headings. If you look at organized sections on the left hand side, 
it will say add in section. So if you are in EDU 675 finance, you can put EDU 675 school finance and add that section. And now you can see we have a brand new section there. You can copy that content, go to that, oops, I'm done editing. I can go to that section just like you would in a um, um, edit this page, just like you would you would uh, work with an assignment. Whoops, let me go back there. And each time when you want to make that, you don't want to you want to make that public, so you have a new page there, and you can uh, go ahead and set up your pages and copy and paste that content um, into that new page. So here we go. EDU 675 page. Edit that page. You can copy and paste that information just like you did on one of your previous sections. You can save that page. And that's as easy as it is. When you go back to that, if you want to edit that page and you want to upload um, uh, uh, information just like you would in, a, in, in, a, in a, a regular campus class, if you had a uh, assignment that it said in that document, if you put uh, finance assignment or whatever the name of that assignment is, you can go to the image file upload just like you would in a regular class. You can find that document within your files and you can upload that straight to your um, uh, to that page. On the other hand, if you want to edit that document, you can also go to course submissions and every assignment that you ever turned in to Canvas is sitting there. And so all you need to do, and unfortunately, I don't have any assignments turned into Canvas, um, but I do have um, some quizzes that I kind of played with along the way. So I could just I can just grab that assignment. I could select that submission. I could hit save and that assignment is there. And so the easiest thing for you is number one is you can upload it just like you would um, when you uh, attach an assignment in Canvas, or you can grab that assignment from um, uh, all the assignments that you've ever posted. So any assignments that you posted is out there and all you have to do is go click, 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 those three clicks and you're finished. All right, I'm gonna close my mouth just for a moment and I'm going to go back to the ePortfolio and to the Randall Peterson ePortfolio home and start to ask, answer some questions for you. What did I just show you that made sense? Is it clear or is there some things that I can show you right now that would be beneficial to jumpstart your process? How can I be helpful tonight? Could you possibly go back to the um, page that you just made and insert like a random assignment there so I could just see how it would populate and it's supposed sure. to look? All right. So if I go back here and go to ePortfolio, you'll see all the ones that I created. And so if we go to home. Oops, I'm going to go back to a different one. Hold on just a second. I'm going to go back to that one that I'm halfway done with. Oops, sorry. Let's go back here, ePortfolio. Let's see. We'll go to that one. So if we go to, this is the page that I just created a moment ago. And so if we want to add a, a submission, you could do it two different ways. If you click on, okay, if you, the first thing that you did, you already typed in your essential learning paragraph statement, your application of learning. Um, 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 all you need to do then is go to edit page. And you can do two things. One is you can upload a file just like you would in a campus. So if you typed in um, what that assignment is and you said image upload, image or file upload, and then you can search and choose a file 
I can go to my computer and I'm just going to stick a random file there. This is uh, actually the, the, the teaching schedule for summer. And I'll select that and upload that file. And I'll save. And now you can see that um, the uh, assignment that I just uploaded is now sitting at the bottom there. But the other way that you could do it, if you go edit this page, and you want to go to course submission, and, and again, like I said before, if there is any assignment that you submitted, all you'd need to do is click on course submission, and all those assignments would be listed over here on the left side. And you could just go ahead and choose the appropriate assignments, and they would be posted in that session. So do we have to type in the assignment name for every time we're um, uploading something to that page? No, the uh, the assignment name, if you, as you can see, uh, maybe if you, I don't know if you can see that on the bottom there. When you upload it, it'll be just like when you upload into Canvas. It will say the name. Um, you'll say that this was a uh, the uh, case study finance in, in the finance class. Um, whatever you named it, and most people do name it uh, something appropriate so they can find it. So it'll say case study finance EDU 675 or, or whatever you named it. And that'll be just, sit, excuse me, that'll be just sitting right there. You can put a listing, like I put on there, finance assignment. Um, you could put, type those in, or you could just click on the bottom. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna share, when I go back here, I'm gonna show you um, the individual exemplar. This is the one that the student created. And make this a little bit bigger. As you look at the bottom, this, uh, this student chose to um, just upload those assignments. And hopefully you can, see that on the screen. Um, induction and retention paper, plan for developing emergent leaders, a principal interview, learning platform. You can see that just has the names that you named in your computer and those will be posted right there. And if they, as long as they mean something to you and they align with those assignments that are listed, for example, this is for uh, course 676. And if you go down to, let me make this a little bit smaller. If you go down to course 676, you'll see these four assignments need to be posted. And if you look, go back up here, you'll see that look, here are those four assignments posted right there. The easiest thing to do is to click on submit from your uh, the assignments that are already posted. And that, that makes it uh, very, very simple. Or you can do it just like you do when you turn in an assignment for um, this person over here. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. This is two different people. This person posted them um, in a different way. And so you can, you can post them in two ways. One, you can uh, attach it just like you would an assignment in Canvas, or you can upload it from the assignments that you have already posted in the gradebook. And so anytime you click on edit, I'm gonna go back to that screen. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller here. There we go. So when you go to edit, once you've created your page, this is uh, page 675. If you go to edit on the right side of the page, you'll have course submission or file upload. And you can make a choice, whatever one feels better to you. It doesn't really matter. As long as those documents are connected, you could do it either way. The course submission will choose it from assignments that you have already posted within Canvas. And the other one is uh, image upload. You can click on that one and it'll take you to your, just like you, again, when you post assignment in Canvas, it'll go to your computer and you'll choose that file. Whatever, whatever way is easier for you. Um, and I would try to make sure it's a consistent way. So whoever the, whoever the reader is, has a consistent way to see where those documents are. So you can choose image file upload or course submission. As you type that information in there, um, you can click on the rich text content and that's what brings you to uh, create the, um, just like you'd be typing in an assignment in Canvas. And so when you go in, one of the things I would, uh, I would recommend, go in and play. Um, I talked to some folks last night and they said, I'm afraid I'm gonna mess something up. You can't mess something up. And if you do mess it up, uh, let me tell you, when I first started, I messed up my first two. I just hit delete, delete. I was a little bit afraid to delete because I wasn't sure what I was going to delete, but know that you can't mess it up. 
And so you could go ahead and create one, play with it, and get to get a feel for all those pieces. You could have the uh, um, uh, um, the uh, video going in the background that points you in that direction. I will also post this video on this website right here. That again is in this is the web tool that's connected within the class. And if you go to ePortfolio, after this session, when that uh, when the recording that we're just putting together is finished, I'll collect I'll attach that also underneath this content. Okay, what other questions do you have right now? I want to be cautious not to bury you with information. I want to be uh, cautious to more appropriately just answer questions for you and um, kind of go from there. I have a question about the summary you just went over. So that's for each class we take, or is it for each um, assignment? Each class that you take. Okay. So for each course that you take, now the, the, fir the, the, the front page, the home page, I'm gonna go back to, if you go to the home page, I'm gonna go back to the one I created. Hold on just one second. Bear with me, by the way. Here we go. Oops. So we'll go to ePortfolio. Go to the one I originally created. You're going to create one home page. You're going to name it home page, and that home page will have that con original content in it, and then you're done. Um, until you need not, to not this page not this I'm talking about the one you were just on the, um, it says something about application of learning yep so that's the... so each course that you have again starting spring a 2024 again I would I would recommend that you have all your class courses in there but at a minimum starting spring a 2024 if you had um, educational decision making you'll have that in there with the educational decision making on that uh, page, you're going to have your, and you can cut and paste that content in there that says, you know, the essential learning, reflective statement, um, the uh, application of learning, the outcomes. And then from there, you're going to go to edit page and you're just going to place those three or four assignments on that page and you're done. So where do you get that from? Did you type this already? The essentials, learning, reflective statement and the artifacts. I don't know. Where do you see yep. that? At? Well, what I did is, is I did it one time in my first course. And then I just copied and pa copied it and pasted it in each one. But if you go to the center of that screen we talked about before, you can see the graphic, what it should look like. Here it says, this is what your homepage should look like. It should include these three statements. And on your course page, you should have these three statements. And I, I just put in there as a reminder, you can cut and paste or type that content in whatever way is easier for you. But you'll put, you'll have three headings on the, on the course page and you'll have three headings, headings on that single homepage. Okay. And for right now, the, um, uh, you're not going to be receive a grade that says, uh, like if you are in decision, uh, educational decision making right now, and you had a one sentence statement under the essential learnings, which you learned just for right now through the end of the class, you're not going to get an A, B or C. You're going to get a complete or incomplete. And so um, know that we expect it to set the foundation as you're going through the program and hopefully it make it uh, uh, enhance the quality, substance and depth along the way. Okay, and, and once you get to your EDU 699 class, uh, that professor will expect that when they click on your portfolio, they see a fairly complete portfolio. They'll make some comments that says, um, Pamela, you have one, one sentence there that probably doesn't sell you as well to an employer. And Pamela may say, I don't plan on sharing this with an employer. And they'll say, well, Pamela, if you did take advantage of this opportunity, because when it says, you know, what did I learn in this program or what are your aspirations? That's going to be something you need to develop because that will be a question in your interview. So that's a little game that you'll play back and forth. But for right now, the most important thing is just put the, the basic content in, put those assignments in, and you're done for right now. 
And then as you uh, move towards your internship and as time allows, you're going to redevelop and grow that and become more familiar with the process because once you get into it, start clicking and start to, it'll, it'll start to format the way that you have saw, you saw the examples. And all of a sudden it's going to be one of those things that take, uh, takes three minutes instead of, I talked to somebody the other day, they said, I've been doing this for three hours. It's driving me crazy. I have, I got to put my kids to bed and I got to finish my homework. Uh, well, three hours, that's a little bit much. But once you get into it, you're going to find that each page, to create each page, just the, the foundation, um, it's probably a two or three minute thing. To enhance the quality, to support you in your candidacy as you move forward, um, yeah, that's a different story. Other questions? And each, I'm trying to, I cleared out the page, but each statement, um, is geared towards that course correct but every statement is exactly the same and so if you look at um i'm going to go back to the actual portfolio that i had put together so what i did when i put together this portfolio that you're seeing is i created my home statement and the three items right here in, uh, is uh, the, the professional biography, the aspiration statement, mission, vision, values. And then I went to that first course and I just copied and pasted the, these three statements and created the course, paste, created the course, paste, created the course, paste. And uh, once you paste that in there, um, then you can go back uh, when you need to um, and put in, you know, what it, what is a good way to look at, uh, you know, what did I learn in the research class? What did I learn in the finance class? Um, you know, what's, what is a statement or two that uh, re reminds you of whatever you learned in that class, how it will support your professional journey and support you in your, um, uh, in your job, because when you, what I would recommend, if you're uh, if you're going into an interview and you don't feel like sharing this, I would use this to to prompt your understanding. Because more than likely, in an interview, someone's going to ask you that question: um, Have you been involved in the finance process? And most people say, Well, you know, I I haven't. I haven't managed a finance budget, but let me tell you what I know about school finance. I've had an opportunity to create a budget in the school finance class. I've had a chance to um, uh, interview uh, individuals who run that program. And let me tell you what I know about. And so you'll be able to have some answers. When I interviewed assistant principals first time, very often if I said, if you are in charge of an area of finance with the school, uh, how proficient do you believe you'll be? Almost 100% of the people said, I've never done this before. I don't quite know what I'm doing. Not a good answer. Even if it's true, the best thing to do is say, I haven't had a chance to do it as an employee, but let me tell you what I have done. Um, it, it, you can you can bring some of that content. You can uh, summarize that content. You can look back on the essential learnings, the application statements that you put together, and you have a jump start uh, into how you're going to engage in that discussion. You don't want to be that person who walks into an interview and said, I've never done that before and I haven't thought much about it. That's not a good way to answer that question. Other questions about the uh, portfolio itself? Are you able to look to see if, I don't mind if you can see mine to tell me if I'm on the right track? If you don't mind me um, pulling your direct file up? No, I don't mind. I on the screen, let me go back to this. And are you in the finance or the uh, decision making? I can't recall rec off the top of my head. What what class are you in right now? Uh, with me, what class are you in? Open up your mic. I'm with you. Um, I think in, visionary. Okay. In okay six. get to grades I'm gonna stop sharing just for a moment so I'm not pulling up okay and you did you did an initial submission of yours already correct second while I search. Oh, here we go. 
Okay, so you did not, I can't um, pull yours up um, unless um, unless you have submitted, either given me the link. Um, for example, I see, I'm trying to see if there's anybody else in. No, yours, you haven't, you haven't submitted it for a formative assessment yet, correct? I can't, I can't because you have, everything is private to you. It's only public if you post it into the assignment, for example, in module five, in the courses that you're in right now, mm -hmm. um, there was a formative assessment and you were going to put a, you were to either give me a summary of where you're at or, or provide your link. And so um, I wasn't able to uh, pull that up for you. If you sent me the link, um, I would be able to do that. And as, as you do create, if you do um, uh, want to send me a link at any time, just you know, send me an email and say, hey, am I on the right track? Um, I could give you, uh, I'd be happy to give you some formative assessment. I think that if you look at what the sample is, um, you can kind of see how those pieces pieces come together. But if you, uh, um, uh, the, uh, I think I have each one of you in class right this very minute. Um, and so in the module five, if you want to post something, I can give you some feedback on it, or if you just want to send it to me in an email. And again, the uh, um, um, I will, anybody who doesn't turn it in during this course, it will say incomplete in the assignment. Um, you won't get it incomplete in the class, but you're just delaying some challenges till you get to the 699. And so that's why I want to really encourage you to, even if it's something that you're not, you don't think is perfect, um, by the end of this course to make sure that you send it to me. So at least I can give you some feedback. Uh, again, it's not an A or B or a C. It's complete or incomplete with comments from me saying, hey, you're right on track. Just like the uh, the individual that I gave you, uh, I showed you that sample. Um, I, she blew me away. Um, I, I sent out when we first uh, gave her the instructions. Um, all of a sudden, she sent me back. She said, I'm in the ballpark. I said, can I use yours as a benchmark um, to uh, so all the other fellow students can see that? Um, and so uh, it, it just depends on um, as you get into it. I think you're going to find it fairly easy. Um, and you, again, if you if you if it's all messed up and it doesn't look good, you can hit delete and start all over again. And again, I'll go back. Once you get a hang of where you're clicking, you'll find that it's a three minute thing and it's not a, it's not no longer a challenge. And so um, when we start it with everybody being in the 614 original class um, and we through that class, we learn a little bit more about it. It'll be a very uh, much of a non issue as we go through. And um, again, the last reminder that uh, as you get into your internship, uh, everything as of spring A 2024 should be in there. And I'm going to encourage you to bring everything over because, again, I think once you get into it, you'll see it's fairly easy to bring all put up, to put all that information together. And the only thing that would take you a little bit more time is to create a uh, um, a summary of uh, of, uh, of uh, application and a summary of the essential learnings, those type of things. And for right now, all it needs to be is a draft statement, something just to kind of get you started that you can grow as you head towards your internship. Other questions? I hope I took a little bit of anxiety. I know I talked to somebody last night and uh, um, it was, uh, they were didn't go over the deep end, but I could tell that there was an anxiety level of, oh my gosh, we're in the last term, it's at the end, of, end of school, we have state testing, all this kind of stuff, and now I gotta do this thing. Uh, and uh, once we got going on it, uh, she said, hey, that's really pretty simple. And it is once you get doing it. It's just like any other technology thing. Once you know where you're clicking, it gets to be very repetitive and uh, very simple to do. So if you have questions along the way, drop me an email. Um, if uh, along the way that you feel like you're just about there, take a peek at the video. This video will also be there. And um, if you're still having a challenge, if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one session um, where you, we could share screens and uh, I could help you out in that way also. So I'll, uh, I'll stick around if you have additional questions. Otherwise, I wanted to be respectful of your time tonight, but also be available to uh, help support and start moving in the right direction. And I'll stick around if you uh, need additional help. Have a good night. I have a question, but I want to talk to you like after everyone gets off. So probably. Sure. Look, we can wait for a moment. I have a question. Um, so basically, I feel like everything you said helped. I was able to do everything yourself. 
you know, write the statements just yet. Yep. But um, at some point, one of our courses, someone's going to go in and they're going to want to see what we have done, correct? Well, each course, um, your instructors, like for example, at 637 or 675, 614 that I'm teaching right now, um, I'll go in when you turn in your um, your e-portfolio mm -hmm. and you'll get uh, a either incomplete or complete from me and a summary. I'll either say, hey, thumbs up, you're, you're in a good place, or I may say, all you need to do is expand on your statements, um, you know, something like that. And so you'll get a, you'll get a tentative thumbs up just to make sure you're moving in the right direction. And then when you get to 699 is when they say, if they say that you're, you have, it's not at a point where you have the proper stuff uh, organized and to a reasonable depth, um, you could get it incomplete in that class. Oh, that's, wow. why I want to, that's what that's why I want to make sure that you have time mm -hmm. now to get things organized and um, we'll, we'll continue to do uh, you know I know there's some folks that are in the, the internship in summer one and they're still trying to you know get get their portfolio organized and so we're gonna be flexible we're reasonable people we'll help you we'll support you um, it's not our goal to get you it's our goal to get you there so you have a quality portfolio that meets the requirements of the Florida Department of Education and supports you as you look for jobs okay my last question is i was looking at the chart you have for like all of the classes and what those assignments should look like i'm also in the um legal environment class and the assignments are i can understand what assignments they are they're just labeled differently than what we labeled them in class or so so should i rename them to match that so whoever's looking at their it will know like, oh, this is what she did. Like we had a choice topic, but I did mine on religion and school. So that's what it's yep. titled. But should I go back and put choice topic, religions and school? Well, no. the, not, you're not gonna put all of your assignments from EDUs or the-, uh, the I know, the but I'm, I'm basing it off of this chart. Yep. So it says school case law analysis, evaluation, communicate. Yep. I believe that's the tort walk, tort paper. Yep. That's not, but that's not what we called it in class. And then so, next it says law portfolio assignments tort. We did like a library research assignment. I'm sure that's what that one is. Teacher rights, which was more about employment rights. So, but it was like we could write on what we wanted to. So, yep. um, and then a choice topic where he gave us the choice to do like a PowerPoint or a writing or a paper. I chose a PowerPoint but it was on religion at school, you know? So it's not gonna say choice topic. It's yep. not gonna say school case law analysis because we called it tort walk and tort, tort paper, you know? Yep. Okay. So you're, you're uh, uh, you can do two things. One is you can just post your paper, the, the, the assignment that you have with the current title, mm -hmm. um, or you can save it to align that a little bit you know, a little bit closer because the choice topic that um, I understand that the choice topic, there's a there's a focus to it. Uh, mm -hmm. But since everybody does their own choice, um, it's listed as choice topic on here. Would it also be good because I've already uploaded them. But if um, in the rich text, I also put like label this is that this is that so whoever's viewing that can be able that is a, that is a wonderful way to do it okay yeah. thank you yes. okay what I, yeah what i want to try to do as much as possible is keep everything as simple as possible and to allow you to um, uh, embellish a little bit more but my goal has been um, how do we create a framework for you to work in and then from there you can uh, embellish you can uh, create additional quality to that Okay, so, I'm so, that. so what you just explained, you're, you're right on target, you're right in the ballpark. Okay, thank you. All right. I appreciate you asking that question because um, the, the, you're exactly right, especially some of these assignments, that is the direct name um, in the course. Other ones, like the choice topic, of course, it's, it's a little bit different. Yes, thank but you. If, but if you use the rich text, uh, again, it takes seconds to uh, uh, to define it a little bit cl more clearly, uh, and that's a wonder way, wonderful way to do it. Good thinking. <laughs> Any other qu questions? I just wanted to say thank you for giving us um, so much information today. Uh, I already started doing it as you were walking us through it. If I have any questions in particular to what I'm putting, I'll go ahead and reach out to you. But I really just wanted to say thank you 
Uh, yeah. Professor Peterson. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's helpful. I know that uh, uh, it's easy to say it's just simple because it is. But I know myself um, until you've clicked on it a few times uh, and uh, you know what is right, what is wrong, and most folks in these classes will want things to be of quality as as you do, uh, and that's why I wanted to make sure that we had some extra sessions to talk. And I know that uh, eventually, just like with live text and some other things, it will be just uh, just old news. But for right now, I want to make sure that it's as easy as possible. Time is time is an important resource, and you you guys are burning the candle at two ends all the time. So, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Bye. All right.